Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Exotic Astrology, and we have Ryan Kuzak with us today. Welcome to Exotic Astrology, sir. Great to see you. Many, you. many, many people have been requesting that please bring him. So finally, today he's here, and today he's going to speak on chakras and how it is linked with the zodiac signs. So welcome to Exotic Astrology once again, and please enlighten us. Sure. Thank you for having me. I really appreciated it, and. Um, <clears throat> You know, one of the things that we discussed in our uh, initial um, uh, email exchange was what to talk about. And one of the things I think is very important for people to understand astrologically is how each sign represents or is related to the chakras within uh, the spine of the body. And the reason I find that to be so helpful is because if you're not an astrologer, but if you know a little bit about the planets and you know a little bit about chakras, then you can start to think about, well, what does it mean if you have a planet, say, in Capricorn and Aquarius related to the first chakra, or in Libra and Taurus related to the fourth chakra? Essentially, that shows you um, what your inner energy state or your, your inner state of karma is. So that's what an astrologer is actually doing. Um, and so to begin, when we look at the chakras, we have to remember that number one, they are related to the planets. And oftentimes it's easy to think about how they're related to the planets when we think about how the, the solar system is organized. So if you've got the sun, this represents the sixth chakra. Uh, next you have Mercury, which is the throat chakra. And then Venus, the heart chakra. Mars, um, the third chakra. Jupiter, the second chakra and um, the first chakra is related to Saturn. And if you look at that in, in relationship to the solar system, that essentially is the order that the planets go in. They go from Sun out to Saturn. And so that's a representation of what us as humans have within us because the, the astrology uh, portion uh, of life is related to that internal aspect of ourselves when we think about yoga and inner transformation and change. Um, so for example, um, if we took the zodiac, if we took the zodiac and we've got it in a circle, but if we kind of stretched it out and squished it down, we would have um, Capricorn and Aquarius over here, and then we'd have uh, Cancer and Leo over here. And then along that line, we would have these pairs where we would have um, Pisces and Sagittarius, and then Aries and Scorpio, and then um, Taurus and Libra, and Gemini and Virgo, and again, um, Leo and Cancer. And that's going to be how the chakras line up along our spine. So when we think about, um, for example, Aquarius and Capricorn, that is the first chakra because it relates to Saturn. Now, there are very interesting things that you can learn about yourself and through astrology by, by thinking about this. And one of them is when you think about the planets and what planets do well in those two signs and what planets do poorly in those two signs. So for example, Jupiter's debilitated in that sign. Mars is exalted within that sign. And what does that tell us? Well, number one, we know that when Jupiter is too caught up in um, looking down at the problems of life, the person tends to have a lot more difficulties. And the signs of Aquarius and Capricorn, that's ruled by Saturn, and Saturn's gaze is downward. So he's always looking at problems. And the first chakra is all about dealing with those problems in life uh, the things we all have to deal with, such as having enough food, having enough money, illness, death, and disease. These are Saturn qualities, poverty even. So Jupiter, he gets stifled when he's in that, those, that area, those two signs, um, particularly when he's in Capricorn, uh, because he doesn't necessarily do so well in this first chakra energy. However, if we think about Mars, well, Mars is exalted in this sign. And many people wonder why is Mars exalted in the sign of Saturn? Because they don't, we don't typically think they get along real well. However, um, Mars is the planet, he's a, a Tomasic planet, like Saturn is a Tomasic planet. And Mars's job 
is to take care of those problems before, to take care of those problems which are emergencies, things which have to be taken care of right now. And so when we stick Mars, that energy in the first chakra, that can give a person a lot of drive and a lot of focus to be able to excel at fixing problems, at preventing problems before they get worse. Um, you know, Mars is the engineer. He deals with logic. He deals with um, idealism and these sorts of things. So that's one of the reasons why Mars is uh, exalted in that first chakra area um, of um, Capricorn and Aquarius. Does this make sense what I'm trying to say here? Yes, yes, it makes sense perfectly. Okay, good. So when we think about um, when we think about astrology and we think about the chakras, uh, what what that does is it tells us how how are we functioning in this life. Um, Saturn works very well because Saturn owns those two signs, and and the reason this is also important is because from a, a yogic perspective, a meditative perspective, um, one of the meditative techniques I use is, is Kriya Yoga, which is taught by Paramahansa Yogananda. And the idea is that you circulate life force through the spine through a particular breathing um, pattern. And his teacher, Swami Sri Yukteswar, was also um, uh, an astrologer. And he would always say that uh, by doing yoga and meditation, uh, Kriya Pranayama, that you are you are working on your inner astrology. And the great thing about this is when you start to do some kind of meditation technique that brings your awareness to the chakras, you become less uh, driven by the chakras, meaning you become less unconscious. You are able to understand the issues in your life and deal with them better. So when we think about these things, the point of it is to give us insights into how do we manage these planetary energies based on how they relate to our chakras. Now, when we think about, when we move forward, um, the next chakra is the second chakra, which deals with creativity, and it deals with um, wealth, and it deals with uh, children, uh, sexuality, but a healthy expression of all of these things. So it's not about being um, addicted to sex or things of this nature or being greedy. It's about a healthy expression of wealth and give and take and resources and how to have a healthy intimate relationship with others and jupiter is the planet which rules over uh, this second chakra which is ruled over by um, pisces and sagittarius now again when we're looking at the zodiac it's round but it's hard to visualize and i really wish i was more of an artist because i would love to draw a picture of this um, each each sign has a positive polarity and a negative polarity and that's based on, uh, for example, uh, sign 12, which is Pisces. That's the negative polarity, the feminine polarity, the even sign of that second chakra. And uh, Sagittarius, which is sign nine, um, that's, the, that's a positive number. So it represents the masculine, um, the more assertive side of that second chakra. So each of these chakras has a negative and positive polarity, which is why you have um, you have to have two signs to represent each chakra. Now, when we think about the signs of Jupiter, well, what's interesting, again, are the planets which are exalted and the planets which are debilitated within those signs. So we have Mercury debilitated in the sign of Pisces, but we have Venus exalted in the sign of Pisces. Now, why is this so interesting? Because when we have Venus exalted in the sign of Pisces, that's Venus rules over the heart and the fourth chakra. And so when Venus is in the second chakra, particularly Pisces, then that heart energy expresses through our creativity. Um, then when it comes to having children, children are, are born out of love, not just as a need to, to pass on your legacy or out of a compulsion because everyone's doing it. They're, they're born out of love in the same way that um, when we think about wealth, we, are, we tend to be more charitable. We tend to be more nurturing and supportive to others. That's all because that Venus energy, when it's directed outward in a creative fashion, it manifests in an exalted way in that second chakra. Whereas Mercury, Mercury rules the third chakra, um, or excuse me, not third chakra, the fifth chakra. It's the, Gemini is the third sign, but it rules the fifth chakra, which is the throat. And that second chakra area doesn't function so well with Mercury because Mercury is about 
research, about figuring things out, about communication, about uh, managing things properly. And it has a very sp specific energy about picking things apart and categorizing them. And when we think about the second chakra, which is about creativity and flow, Mercury tends to get stifled uh, when, when, we, when we want to be in a more, um, I don't want to use that word, um, when we want to be in a more uh, fluid state. So that's why Mercury doesn't do too well in the second chakra, because it's not the domain of Mercury. There's too much uh, wateriness, which is Pisces. There's too much um, of this idea of simply giving for the sake of giving, which is why Venus is exalted there, but also Jupiter is a planet of seeing everybody equally. That's why we know that Jupiter is um, the friend, or at least he's kind to, to everyone in every planet. He's not an enemy to anyone. Uh, so Mercury is about distinction and discernment, and he doesn't work too well when there's just this idea of being all-knowing and all-encompassing, which Jupiter rules over. Um, so when we think about these chakras, uh, if we take something like Saturn and we stick it in Pisces or stick, stick it in Sagittarius, we have difficulties there. It's going to show that there's going to be a block to that free flow of energy, which is why sometimes when people have planets in Pisces, like Saturn in Pisces or Saturn in Sagittarius, um, they have difficulty with their religion or their culture, which is a Sagittarius energy, or they have difficulty having children or being uh, feeling fulfilled through their children because Saturn blocks that because Saturn doesn't necessarily function so well uh, in that realm of our, our energy system. Does this make sense what I'm trying to explain here? Yeah, that, that's what I wanted to ask that, uh, like you said, if Saturn is supposed in SAG or Pisces, then this issue can come. So that is like a, that's like the problem which the person faces for the, for the Pisces zodiac sign traits or the planet itself, because Saturn will also have problems there, or how do you see that? Saturn, well, what we have to remember is that the signs, they function as the fields in which the planets act. And so if we take, for example, like um, if we take, let's use Mars, for example, and I'll get back to Saturn. If we take Mars, which is we see as the warrior or the soldier, and if we stick him in an art room with a paintbrush, he's going to get bored and he's going to cause problems because that's not where he functions best. So when we look at the signs, what they're telling us is, uh, is this a field where things function best? So when we take Saturn and stick it into Pisces or Sagittarius, it's that he is not in a field where he has what he needs to succeed or to function well. But oddly enough, he will function well in first chakra things such as, uh, again, Aquarius and Capricorn or um, in Taurus and Libra or uh, Gemini and Virgo because these are fields which support what he's meant to do. Does this answer your question? Yeah, so basically you are saying like it's it's the problem which Saturn also feels and because earlier you said that if suppose Saturn is in SAG then they can have some problems with their religion. Right. So that is like a Sagittarius kind of a problem. That is what I was saying. It's... Exactly. That's correct. Yes, that is that is correct. Yeah. So we look to see what is what is the sign about, and then we see how does that planet particularly mesh with that sign. Yeah. So uh, for example, you said about the first chakra, which is uh, at the bottom most. So that that deals with more of survival related things. Exactly. So, so suppose now, apart from astrology, like suppose Venus is placed so in somebody's chart in Capricorn or Aquarius. Mm -hmm. So then uh, would you drive an inf inference from it like that when it comes to marriage, they are more focused on <laughs> how much money that person will have or not the opposite sex? It, it could be that. However, again, we, we, when we think about it, Venus works, Venus works well in Capricorn and Venus works well in Aquarius because Saturn and Venus are friendly. And when we realize the idea of survival and how people have a lot of problems, the reason Venus works well there is because it brings comfort to them as they work through their problems, you okay. see. So it can, be, it can be what you described. We would have to look at some other things in the chart to see if that's yes. the case. But um, the reason Venus would work well in that first shocker is because we live in a world where there is suffering. You know, I'm sure almost all of us knows at least someone who's got some kind of sickness or might not have enough money or these difficulties are going on. That, that happens in the world. And when a person has Venus in these positions, not only do they tend to be able to um, nurture others, but they're able to kind of see 
that even though life is suffering, that, that we can get comfort, that there is, there is like comfort within um, community or that there is other kinds of comfort that we can rely upon that will help us. So here you are using the gen generic rules, like if uh, Venus is in a friend sign, then it will behave well there. Exactly. That's correct. Yes. Okay. Okay. And that, that is how, I mean, conjunctions will also be studied by that way. So if like there are some conflicting energies, like suppose Saturn and Mars are sitting in Capricorn, bo both are like very strong there. So, I mean, how would you see that in context of this chakra? Yes, and that's a very good point, because if we just have one planet in isolation, um, it'll be much easier for us to say like what we just discussed. But when you get Venus and Saturn and Mars, since Saturn and Mars are both um, strong planets, and we know that when Saturn is with any other planet, by Lajitadi Avashtas, he starves that planet. And since Mars tends to hurt Saturn when they're together, what we're going to see is, first of all, we need to figure out more than likely it's going to be Saturn and Mars, which are stronger because one's exalted and one's in its own home. So that's going to initially tell us that these planets have more power than that Venus does. So it may be that despite the fact Venus is there, the person is not able to find comfort or the person has too much stress and conflict in their life, which drives away Venus, drives away that love, drives away that, that, con um, that comfort. So when you start bringing more planets into play, it becomes a lot more complicated. But if we can know how how these plants function together then that will tell us just what's going to happen you know I, this won't be true but just as a point if for some reason maybe by shadbala or other um, influences to venus venus was stronger within that combination well then we could say this person has a lot of struggle they have a lot of difficulty conflict to overcome but because that venus is there and it's a gentle benefic planet then they do it with grace but again that venus itself by Shadbala and so on would have to be much, much stronger than Saturn and Mars for that to occur. So that's why the numbers uh, of astrology are very important in those kinds of situations. Okay, okay. And mm -hmm. two small questions I want to ask. First is like, um, is there any more variations of the nakshatras which is there inside them? Like, suppose a planet is in a particular nakshatra inside Capricorn and Aquarius. So then... Is there anything else inside the chakra also, something like that? I've never taken it so far as to look at the nakshatras within, um, uh, within the chakra system. Now, again, uh, it depends on how, how you look at it. I mean, I, I practice tropical Vedic astrology, so I use the tropical zodiac with the movable nakshatras. And so whenever I use the nakshatras, I, I think about what nakshatra uh, what nakshatra is occurring that the planet is in. And then when I think about the quality of that nakshatra, I imagine if that planet being in the nakshatra, what qualities of that nakshatra are flowing through that planet. So it won't impact the way we're thinking of the chakras specifically, but it will alter uh, how that planet in its own in its own unique energy is manifesting so it's almost like another level of, um, of of dignity in a way except it's just taking the quality of the nakshatra and flowing it through that planet if, if that makes sense yes yes and uh, suppose one more thing is suppose they, they are forming in a particular house so then i mean how would you relate it that suppose this is forming in the 10th house like for example then then this right. is like their more survival, that instinct is towards carrier. Would you make an inference like that? That's exactly right. Yes, exactly. So what you just said is perfect in that we look at the chakras and then if the 10th house happens to be what we're discussing here, then those survival issues show up in regards to status and career. If it happens to fall in the seventh house and it's, it's again, Aquarius and uh, Capricorn, then those kinds of survival issues are like hanging on to relationship or fighting for a relationship. So whatever houses these are occurring in will tell you what area of life that quality of that chakra is coming through at. Okay. So basically wherever Capricorn and Aquarius falling is falling that, that those houses will have the flavor. Exactly. That's correct. Yes. Okay. 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 <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so now the remaining parts of the chakras we will do in the next session. That sounds fine. Yeah, thank you very much and stay tuned for the next session, okay?